industrial township, thousands gather outside a police station in protest against new laws requiring every African to carry a pass at all times. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile 
for us to continue talking peace and non-violence against a government whose reply is only savage attacks on an unarmed and defenseless people. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome to our Gauteng Film Commission and the Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation. 
virtual round table. And, and this year we are celebrating and commemorating the year of Me Charlotte Magleke in this human rights and the entire um, uh, uh, month as well as the rest of the year. We are here today going to talk about human rights, um, where we are today as human rights, where we are today with the preservation of human rights. But with me today, I've got my distinguished guests and I would like to welcome all my guests today for making the time uh, to engage with me for the rest of today. And I would like to welcome all our audiences that are watching from various online streaming sessions. Welcome guys, we are looking forward to your participation. My name, your host is Ntabiling Pora from the Gauteng Film Commission. As responsible for skills development and audience development programs. Without further ado, I would like to start with my guest, uh, Neville Felix. Please introduce yourself. Um, good afternoon. My name's uh, Neville Felix. I'm the director at Seribeng District Municipality, responsible for sports, recreation, arts, culture, and heritage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's go to Shirley. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Shirley Naran from the Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation and I'm the Directorate of Social Cohesion. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll head over to Meselwani as well as uh, Dateniko. Lumela, Kisilwani Pentani, the Chambers and the Kulumani Support Group for the victims and survivors of apartheid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my name is Nicole Ntema and um, I'm a Shawville heritage enthusiast. And besides that, uh, I'm an acting center manager for Kito Information and Development Center, which is operating from the Shawville Old Station. Thank you. And um, Ntate Joseph Hateva? Uh, good afternoon, colleagues, uh, viewers at home. My name is Joseph Norman Hateva. I'm an acting director at the Val University of Technology responsible for community engagement, but I'm also a co-founder of Ubaba Okoto Men's Forum, which has been doing a lot of work in the Val, particularly during this month of human rights. But I'm also a social cohesion advocate um, at the national level in my capacity as a deputy secretary. We are responsible for social cohesion and nation building as it finds expression in the National Development Plan and Outcome 14 of the Medium Term Strategic Framework. And you are welcome. Thank you. And um, I think welcome uh, everyone again. Uh, we're hoping to have a very fruitful um, one hour, 30 minutes discussion. I would like to start by saying um, happy human rights. And um, we thank um, ourselves, our families, God, and all the other beliefs that we have that in the year of uh, COVID-19, we are still on above earth and we are still alive and we are still healthy. We thank everybody else, wherever where we are believing to still be alive and, 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 and be present in this day. Human rights, Shabville. Dr. Felix, would you like to take us through a short history of uh, the Shabville massacre and whilst we are still talking about that, we then ask you uh, and then you could just come in and talk about human rights in Shabville in today's age. Thank you. Um, I think I need to start at uh, the very beginning and sometimes we miss the activity and the events that led to Sharpeville 1960. Uh, Sharpeville 1960 has a background um, of where uh, the National Party in the 1948, when they became the governing party of South Africa or the governing uh, process of South Africa, when they came into being, they started to facilitate a whole range of things. And... Uh, just prior to their establishment as the new government, uh, governance uh, structure in South Africa, they had then adopted a whole range of uh, policy frameworks. Some of these policy frameworks has always been there since colonialism, but however, what they did is they created a legislative framework 
that made segregation and, eth and ethnic racial uh, disparities part of the processes of law in South Africa. And they then produced in 1958 what one can classify as the force removal processes. And this happened in the Vaal at a place called Top Location, where they had this location on the outskirts of the city at the time. And as the city was developing, some of the residents of the city in Vereniging had a problem with this mixed conurbation of people that were staying on this place called Top Location, just about 10 kilometers outside of the heart of the city of Vereniging. And within this uh, community was a diverse group of people. Uh, this diverse group of people had uh, uh, your African groupings, it had your some Chinese groupings staying there, it had Indian community groupings that stayed there, and also your so-called colored groupings that were staying all in this conurbation uh, called Top Location, where the Val Technorama Museum is based today as we speak. And this top, uh, top, top location had produced numerous, numerous, numerous fundamental people. For example, a lot of people don't know that uh, some of the people that come from here is Adelaide Sakudu, uh, the wife of O.R. Tambo. Uh, she comes from that top location area. Another uh, person of interest or person of uh, special interest is... Uh, um, um, the lady, uh, the Kachalia uh, mother, who was also born uh, in top location. And there was numerous other uh, um, credible people, musicians and uh, 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 poets and, 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 and so forth that came from this background of this conurbation of this community that had found to live with each other in top location. From there, they were forcefully removed into segregated areas to the Roystierne and uh, there in Sharpville where they moved the so-called African majority people there and they moved the Indian community to the new area called uh, Roshni and they also moved the colored communities right next door to Roshni uh, in, to a place called Rastafal. The Chinese that was there also moved and uh, obviously they found themselves in new places but coming back to the, the, this is the foundation of Sharpville. Sharpville itself uh, then made the international global scene by virtue of what had happened uh, in preliminary to the 21st of uh, March 1960, where the whole country, the whole atmosphere, the whole foundation of the country was shaken by the changes that was starting to uh, come into play by the national party government and of course this then produced within itself a series of, of uh, unhappiness with a whole range of different people, different communities with different political formations and parties and of course people had to stand up and make their voices heard and this unfortunately is what then transpired on that fateful day on the 21st of March 1960 where people through the advice that was given to them then marched to the Sharpville uh, police station to object against the processes of carrying what one can classify a dompas <laughs> um, because that is what you needed to carry with this new segregation. You couldn't walk in town, wherever the police would find you, you would have to have this passport on you to prove that you were resident of the area. You There was also curfews at night that wouldn't allow you into different areas uh, because of the clampdown of this new policy framework of the National Party. Uh, this then forced the, the community in Sharpville to take it upon themselves, along with other communities in South Africa, it also happened across the country in Langa. It also stopped many communities in Everton and other areas, Roshni, Rastafal and so forth, from actually joining with the processes because they were stopped on that fateful day by the security forces and the police. 
from also joining up with the Sharpville community so that it could give the, e the effect that was needed to show that there was uh, consistent uh, disapproval and rejection of this apartheid policy. The unfortunate part is that uh, on this fateful day, this community went with a full intention to go and express their dissatisfaction with this apartheid. And in this particular process, unfortunately, from the records that we had managed to gather together, um, the special police units that was brought in from Krugersdorp and other areas then saw this as a process of people ex expressing uh, possible violence or whatever their views was on that particular day. And uh, the end result was that 69 people were fatefully wounded and uh, a number of that community was injured on that specific day. In fact, uh, which was supposed to be a peaceful resistance march, turned out, in, turned into a massacre of such a proportion that this made global international news. And on the basis of this, the United Nations eventually outlawed apartheid as a crime against humanity. So I thought I'd just leave it at that so that we allow Nico and others to also bring the discussion uh, into, into the fray. Thank you. Before, before you respond, Nico, thank you, Dr. Felix. Before you respond, do you think, within your response, do you then think human rights has been respected um, with the intention which it was meant to be in today's age, as you're also going to bring in all the other issues that we are faced with in today's human rights issues? Do you think the significance that it played do we commemorate that and respect that? But also, are we also getting services which we fought for so much in today's age? What, what is your view on that? Um, my, my personal view, it's, it's quite deep. Um, I'm actually busy writing a book uh, as we speak called Race, Pride and Prejudice, uh, which I'm hoping to release uh, by the end of this year or early next year. Uh, but in the book, I've done quite a lot of deep research as to the conditions in South Africa and the situations that we face ourselves with on a daily basis. My personal view is that as South Africa, we have not sufficiently dealt with the social injustices of the past. Mm -hmm. Given the fact that uh, these social injustices is actually 369 years since the foundation of colonialism in South Africa. So you have a series of social injustices that happened over many, many centuries consistently by people that came and took over. There's no other way to put it, but came and took over South Africa. So there was we, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you, Felix, but I think I just want to get everybody into this conversation. Nico, what, what's your view on, on, on what Felix is saying? Um, maybe I'll have to give a perspective first um, yes, on how yes how significant Shabwin itself is on the international platforms. Um, on the 21st of March, 1960, um, that's the story that everyone knows. Um, mm -hmm. People were shot in Shabwin, 69 officially were declared dead, and 180 as an official record as well, and became a known figure. But mm -hmm. um, the 21st of March, 1966, was declared an international discrimination discrimination by the United Nations. Um, which was a milestone that was never seen in the history of a small township like that uh, to mm -hmm. have uh, recognition. But on top of that, uh, the constitution of this country was signed in Sharpeville on the 10th of December 1996. But uh, in 1948, on the 10th of December, the United Nations um, declared the International Day, um, actually the International Human Rights Day. Yes. So you can realize that Sharpeville is the only place on earth, because that's what I always tell people. It's the only place on earth that has got the relations to human rights and racial discrimination, especially um, intentions to eradicate it, than any other place in the world. Meaning that mm -hmm. you've got days that are actually recognized here in South Africa as a public holiday on the 21st of March, but internationally so. And in all educational institutions with interest, in other places where apartheid is actually linked 
to other atrocities that are happening around the world. But those are days that, to this day, no other settlement of this size has ever had that kind of recognition. So mm -hmm. the challenge is that we haven't explored or even exploited that milestone to this day. Shaping still remains a date. It still remains a number. And even uh, those people that have died on the 21st of March remain literally faceless uh, in the face of the world. We've got these beautiful mm -hmm. big days, but we still can't recognize those people that were uh, shot dead on that particular day, even not recognizing those who survived. So in terms of human rights, um, it's, not, it's not an event. Recognizing human rights, it's a process because mm -hmm. you have to perform a certain um, activity that leads to another activity so that you can actually shape the future or actually change some, some course. But mm. at this time, I still believe that we haven't explored how big Sharpville is, especially in terms of international recognition, but also we haven't actually recognized it ourselves as South Africans on how fortunate we are to have an event, just one event that can actually have uh, tentacles um, that are even linked to other issues around the world. So, so coming back to what you are saying, and I'm bringing you in, Messilon, is that with, with the uh, Kulumani, a, a group of activists and survivors, with what Neville has just said and Dadeniko has just said, what is the role of this uh, NGO and what, what, are we, what, what is the intentions of this movement giving a consequence and response to what Neville and, and Dadeniko has just said? Thank you. Shabili in the one. Kolomani support group. If you tell about it, it is a man about to ha holo holo, but one in Bakula, Kahabi, but one in Bashoka, the cancel, but one in Bashoka, who to sue a cabin. Kolomani in a putava to one. Yaba fuck cancel, Yaba butter at the living ark. Kolomani is a redite who fishana in a bed, Muso, who Muso or Shabba to one. Kathy Alfi in Kank. Ellen TLC and then Musanasi has TLC and the unfinished business. Is still a lot of other matter. How Hulu, Hulu, who bought one of them in six. Yahola, who bought to Wagabang, hundred and twenty, but they. In Kila, only twenty about who but who's who's a how many to the thing. But what came back to the parents and by party in the Honas Valley? Bell could run into a deck of old woman, but to a sack of woman, a woman who baba or Bali makes it. Baba Mala says to kill him. Who had a month of a summer by the Bali and children just of a family, Lesotho, Zimbabwe, or the moon. Empan <laughs> so I think Mama Kyalebo and I think Msebetu is one of the Kim Sebetu Mulu Haulu because of you are offering counseling Eluhori has been neglected and we have ignored uh, for so long. Then I think it's important that I bring in Shelly to say, Shelly, um, I will put you on the spot on this one to say, among the things that we are discussing now, it's the recognition of the survivors as well as 
the, 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 the heroes and the heroines, which we have not mentioned. Is there a, a, a responsibility that, uh, that the department is looking into these issues that we are just talking about right now? Yeah, yes, Chair. We are in the process of recognizing the massacres. We have been dealing with the Kulumani group for many, many years now, with in conjunction with Sedibeng municipality. And, and we've been highlighting all these issues from time to time. And I think we played a very pivotal role uh, as far as human rights is concerned. We've joined with all the different parties, that's PAC, SASCO, and all the other different parties that we have played in and uh, on this 1960 Shavel massacre. Okay. The, so, so as so a department, yes, we have a role. So Dr. Joseph, in terms of civil society, the responsibility between government and civil society around human rights, uh, which space are we playing in today? Uh, let me first and foremost highlight and indicate that Shaville is forgotten. Mm -hmm. The survivors and the victim of Shaville are still entrenched in poverty. There is still a total neglect of the con living conditions uh, that were in 1960 and today. Shaville is neglected in a sense that the state of infrastructure of Shaville as a whole is in tatters. Our heritage site across, across the M. Fuleni has been forgotten to such an extent that uh, during the month of human rights, this month, we had to clean the, 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 the monument, which is neglected. The vandalism in that, in that infrastructure, the prison, to be precise, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. And by saying so, as a civic society, we are trying to entice the government. We are trying to sensitize our own municipalities uh, 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 to, be, to be on top of their game. It cannot be that year in, year out, we do the same processes without thinking of the benefit or the beneficiation that can be derived uh, uh, from these processes. Rest assured that this, um, the current the 2021 human rights will be nothing uh, different from what we have done in the past 10 years or so. From the civic society point of view, we are challenging the government head on to say that the victims and survivors of the Sharpeville shooting must somehow be compensated. There must be a statement that must be given to them on a monthly basis. Why we are saying that, that the freedom uh, uh, that we're enjoying, it is because of, 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 of those victims, the blood that was shed in 1960. Well, mm -hmm. it is time for us to sing a different tune. Who shines, who shines uh, uh, on the 21st of, 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 uh, of March? Our own premiers, our own government, our own president and so forth. Post that with the opportunities and the privileges that M. Fulen and City Bank uh, in general can, 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 can bring. I'll just mention, we are surrounded by Vald River. The marine economy that is derived from the, uh, the, the Vald River and the Vald Dam does not benefit our, our society, Shabil to be precise uh, uh, with anything. We've got, we've got uh, uh, the private industry, your, your ESCO, your, your Kipgate, your NAMPEC, surrounding both Shaville, Bipatong, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that is coming from those industries that are of a benefit to people of Shaville and mm -hmm. influence residents, uh, uh, to, be, to, be, to be precise. We've got a tourism, an opportunity uh, in the tourism landscape that we can explore using the very same monuments, the very same precincts, the very same historic places like your Toknorama, but they remain just entities without any benefit uh, to the so, Bali community. So coming back to what you're saying, Dr. Joseph, and I think I'm, I'm posing this one to anyone, is that 
I think I want us to also come back and, and, and channel this conversation to say, if we, the infrastructure that you're talking about, the issues of tourism, the issues of a, a, a heritage and preservation, and, and remember this conversation is it's both ways. Um, I also have to be challenged with, with some of these issues that you're talking about as I'm also representing at the GFC, is that the space that we need to start playing in us giving each other recommendations on this session to say, where do we start in terms of preserving our heritage? Where do we start uh, with the little that we have in terms of preserving our language, preserving our infrastructure, preserving the history that we have that is so rich and that we feel that it's also our responsibility as stewardship within this country to preserve what is ours and also be the ones that are telling the good stories because we are the only ones that have the correct data that is honest and true uh, outside of the people that will come in our country and take our history and go away with it. Ndete Felix, what is, what is your view on that? Um. Uh, my, 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 my view is that I, um, I, while I agree that we haven't dealt with the social injustices of the past, unilaterally across most of South Africa, because of the amount of oppression and the amount of problems that we had, but when it comes to Sharpville itself, I need to point out firstly, and I want to agree with some of the speakers, in particular Malpatani and even Nico and others, that Sharpville is indeed has been a turning point in our history. Because Sharpville, after the massacre in Sharpville, a decision was then taken to facilitate uh, a revolutionary process of the underground of uh, MK and a whole range of other players that came into focus. It also changed the whole atmosphere in the country and it led to even the issues at Lily's Farm with the rest of the Ravonia trailers and all of that. It's all linked. It's interlinked to that specific epoch in history and the period. And now, Sharpville being the turning point, I want to agree that there has not been sufficient recognition given to the very families and victims themselves of that day. Today, as we speak, we probably remember them as... Uh, uh, the 69 victims, but nobody knows the personal attributes that these victims brought to the process or why, who they were, what value did they add in life and what was their families all about, what was their views and stuff like that. So, yes, I want to agree with that, but then there is a lot that has happened. And uh, I want to just give you a quick rundown, if you'll allow me, three minutes, just to okay. give you a quick rundown. Three, three, three. Three minutes in 1995, <laughs> okay. with the advent of the uh, with the advent of local government. Remember, 1994, 27th yes. of democracy. 1995, November, the following year, we had then what was classified local government. With the advent of local government and this local government bodies that was very uh, diverse, uh, most of them became uh, amalgamated under the new dispensation of democracy which we had black authorities, white authorities, that was all amalgamated. And in 1995, uh, a decision was then taken to build a monument in Sharpville. That monument was then built for a period of about two, three, and, two and a half to three years, they built the monument from 95. Then immediately after that, uh, in 2010, we applied for a neighborhood grant. Um, that was given to us from national government, which was about 280 million rand, where we then developed uh, the precincts around Sharpville, like there where George Tarby Stadium is, at the monument, and also uh, the, 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 uh, the grave site, where we created this special place uh, to commemorate of what had happened there in uh, 1960. And this was then part of the Arab report. It's A-R-U-P, Arab report that we had developed. And in this report was to facilitate a complete comprehensive turnaround strategy, not only just for Sharpul, but for the whole of Sedi Bank, but with Sharpul being one of the flag projects. So there was three areas that was a flag project in the Arab report. The one was the Sharpul precinct, which was the hall that was then developed. Uh, uh, and, and, and refurbished and fixed. And also the other one was on the riverfront 
where we wanted to turn the whole area into a river city. Uh, the third area was the old government precinct that was then turned into constitutional square for market square that was originally there for farmers and traders in the past. And we turned this now into constitution square because the pronunciation of the constitution was then uh, processed on the 10th of December in 1996 and uh, in Sharpville. And it was the first time in the history of South Africa that we actually had a full sitting of parliament in Sharpville for the first time in its history. So there's been quite a lot of things that had happened. But then subsequent to that, in 2016, 2017, we then took it another step further to apply to UNESCO, to the United Nations, to have Sharpville declared a World Heritage Site. And this is the current period that we still find ourselves with of trying to facilitate a process that will take us to the application and the final process of declaring Sharpville a World Heritage Site. So we've been doing things that was much broader, but when it comes to the personal welfare and the, and the well-being of the survivors and so forth and so on, there is other departments that should have stepped in to play a specific role and not just the heritage departments. We've got social departments sure. and welfare departments. So there's a whole range of programs that has been geared towards the Sharpville survivors and the community itself. In fact, we also took them on a journey of living history for the first time in the history of South Africa. We took the Sharpville survivors right down to Cape Town to Parliament, and they were recognized by the president and everybody. That's how much we wanted to place emphasis on the Sharpville community. We took them to Robben Island. We've taken them to other areas where there's been massacres for my department itself. And we've been very instrumental in trying to be at the forefront of agitating, like Nico is saying, like, like uh, Joseph Khadebe is saying, we are agitating to say, please, people, we cannot do this alone. We've been at the forefront for a long time trying to take this thing to another level. But unfortunately, unless the big wigs, the, the big government departments, the big budgets start to be focused towards Sharpville uh, in its redevelopment process, nothing is going to happen. The second area I wanted to focus is that we also need to deal with the social issues. Because mm -hmm. like Mark is saying, they've gone to the Truth Commission. What happened? Yes. What then? Did they receive psychiatric assistance or any programs? So for me, the issue is there's been a disjuncture in the government systems, and we should mm -hmm. go back to some of them and revisit them and make the cabinet and government aware that this is the uh, challenges that we have around the shop for survivors. Thank you. I think I think from my side, what, what, what I would like to contribute to this conversation is that, you know, among the things that as the Film Commission we have seen, um, and I, I, I think I will take part responsibility for that uh, as I am representing the, the Film Commission in the session today, is that we have seen a very limited number of applications coming our way from Shabville. Whether it's it for filmmaking, whether it's it for audience development programs, whether it's it for content development, um, many other services that we are providing in the Film Commission, we really have seen, I think I know only two, if not three, filmmakers which are constant from Shabville. But from the point of audience development, the one thing that I know when I arrive there, there is a lot of community development program that is happening on the ground. But I think the community that is happening and, 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 and programs that are happening don't reach to spaces and offices as, as the GFC, because I, I can really commit to you and, and everybody that is in this session to say in the past five years, the GFC has not received even more than five applications that are coming from Shadville. So the first question that I would always ask myself is that as the GFC, did we do, did we do less to give information about the services that we provide? Uh, and that, hence I'm saying I take part responsibility in this thing. Secondly, is it that people maybe in the, in the space of Shabville, the majority are not interested in film. They, they are interested in other careers, which also there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But also 
what happens to the to the ones that are trying to retain and preserve stories about Shabville and 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 content about Shabville? What happens to that number? Uh, why is it that we also don't have a relationship with them? Hence, I'm saying that I think I'm 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 I'm, I'm not a saint in 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 this session today. I also have to take responsibility to say, with the little that we have seen and with the little that we have funded over the years, uh, we have received a very, very, very minimum number from from Shabir, which is very disturbing, because the stories that are coming there, and when when I get there, even on a social space, the stories that I get, the 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 programs that are here happening. I mean, I I, I met Nico by default, knowing that I'm also going to meet him formally in our meeting, with all the work that he does and audience development programs that he's doing, which. Um, had I not been on in, in, in Shabville on Monday, I wouldn't have known. So, Nico, I'm, I'm putting you again also uh, back to this conversation to say, what other programs do we think? Because I'm, I'm saying we need to start saying, bringing recommendations to the to the end of this, this, this session. Um, the issues are on the table, the issues are being addressed, but I want us by the end of the session, we'll be able to bring recommendations, even if we can start with small things. But at least we we'll know we're the, this is where we are going, and this will be rolled out in phase approach. Nico, uh, with your, your audience development programs, uh, how else do you think we need to start preserving and telling uh, Shabville stories and making sure that at least we, we document that? Because um, you and I at some point will not be above Earth, but we will need our children to still know the history of Shabville. What, what, what is your take on that? OK, thank you again. Um... It's a very interesting question, uh, but I'm going to answer it uh, twofold. There's been a lot of work that has been done already um, in terms of documentation. Uh, I'm part of uh, some academics that are, um, you know, completing their PhDs uh, in terms of certain sections of interest uh, on Shabu. Uh, probably one of them will be uh, graduating in, in June this year. Um, over work that has been done over a period of six years. But besides that, uh, we have tried from our side to re-internationalize Shabville in a different complete manner, whereby the issue of a date should fall off. We, we cannot be recognized because of one day. So many things happened in top location. So many things happened since 1942. So many things happened a minute after the massacre. And so many things are happening again now. So our history is mutating. Um, we are getting various variants of, of Shabville uh, since 1960, and those things have to be recognized. So there's quite a lot of things that are actually happening on the ground. And uh, if I can mention what we have done from the preservation point of view, uh, we are operating from the actual site of the massacre, which is uh, the Shabville Old Point Station. And um, it's a national heritage site. It was declared on the 31st of December 2016. But the building, like many others that you know, uh, that uh, uh, the government managed or, or, or controlled, have got challenges related to, to funding and budgets, uh, because in some instances they're not seen as essential service uh, service delivery spots. Um, and then we we took a lease from the, the municipality, and through our activities here, we've managed to preserve the building itself. Um, mm -hmm you know, from, from this array. I mean, this is a very old building, built in the 50s, and there's a police station. You can imagine the impact of the sun and rain and everything else. So we actually took back that building to its uh, original state, but mainly to be beneficial to more people than those that were surrounding it in 1960, when some of them were shot. So in terms of uh, audience development, as, as you're saying, we have people that are coming to live that history on a daily basis. More than uh, 50 students that are coming for life skills and computer skills within the building. Uh, we've just completed 1,600 uh, people per day meals that we've been doing since January uh, through partnership with the Department of Arts and Culture. And we've initiated a process with the food bank that uh, all the, the victims of uh, apartheid under Kulmani including the Shabwell Six, must be given groceries on a monthly basis. We started that on the 5th of uh, February. We're going to be doing it again on the 5th of um, March. Now, actually, we started on the 5th of March. We're doing it on the 5th of April. It will be happening again uh, in May so that uh, it can be reviewed 
But our intention is to actually have them to be part of that uh, beneficiation process uh, from the, the food bank uh, and the social development uh, you know, in front of So those things are not only about writing stories yes. or, 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 or speaking on the 21st of March. We need to be able to take care of those people that are actually telling the stories. And mm -hmm. one of them is that um, Mayor Selina uh, Muguni, who is one of the actual victims for, for being shot on that day, survivor, uh, to put it right, has actually been um, documented almost more than anybody else because of her age. She's turning 85 on the 2nd of May. And uh, she got a uh, center spread in a German newspaper. So you can imagine that besides the stories that we tell here in South Africa, there are actual survivor stories that have been spread all over the world. And we need to be able to, to do that even here in South Africa. And the challenge is that um, the Houghton Economic Development as a department is sitting there at number 24 um, and very difficult to access. And most people will tell you, even from the GTA point of view, other than the, uh, you know, uh, the agriculture department and all those things. It's not an easy uh, effort that you can actually do to go to Joburg and find someone to be able to speak to without the bottlenecks and the red tapes and all those things. Sometimes you can put up a proposal this year. When you go after six months, that person has been moved and then uh, the new person is not interested to be part of that particular process. So it's not about people not being interested to access services of government. It's about government being hard to find or hard to get in terms of making all these things to be, to be uh, coming down to, to communities. The example that I can put out is that uh, on the 10th of this month, we had the United Nations uh, High, uh, High Commissioner's Office on Human Rights documenting the stories of young people here in Sharpe. And it's a process that took a week to organize. And we managed to actually put that. It's on YouTube now. And some of these young people are actually going to be part of the Human Rights Festival this coming Monday uh, in Johannesburg at Constitution Hill. And so we are process that only took a, a week to organize. But if you go to government and say, we're having that kind of a program, you'll be given five to 10 names of different people that you can even find on the telephone or find through email or the country's phone or anything like that. And in that instance, it only becomes an interest around the 21st of March. If Shavuot <laughs> speaks in June, no one is listening. If Shavuot speaks in September, no one is listening. But come uh, March, maybe someone will listen to you because it's related to us. So those are challenges, where, whether you're a filmmaker or you're a dancer or you're any other person that needs to tell this particular story, they're going to take it from pillar to post so long it's not related to March or it's not near March. And we even no, know, no, people no. here will tell you that we are seeing the, uh, the streets being cleaned. We know, you know, it's around March. And that has no. to end because most of the stories are actually being uh, lost because we can't get access. The offices yes. are far. Some of them, they don't know about them. And there's not that much interaction between these departments, these communities, not sharply per se. The department people still have the same uh, challenges. So if we can have access to these things and government coming down to the people, we'll be able to get the content that we want and the input will actually have the desired output in terms of what we want to do. But those are some of the challenges that we have. Although other departments are forthcoming, but for Shelfville, throughout the years, I've been 25 years in this game, I know all these frustrations of actually getting into a government door, knocking there, and someone, someone, uh, sometimes someone will open, but most of the time, no one opens that door. So... I think I, I, I think you know in as much as there's all these the, the challenges that we are putting, it's always important that we also must not neglect the good things that are coming out of uh, Shadville and and all the other things besides even maybe audiovisual and uh, arts and culture. So yes. I think I'm very happy uh, 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 with, with with what you just presented, Nico, with with the work that has happened dealing with some of the social issues. Uh, for for the survivors, and I think I think it's 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 a it's it's a it's a beautiful program that is happening that just maybe needs us to maybe call other people and open more doors for these things to happen because we we can't only just you are correct to say Shabville cannot be only Shabville when it's talking about the twenty first of 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 March, but but it is a living experience of people that are living there on a daily basis that have all the 
issues, whether it's, 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 it's on education, whether it's on social issues, whether it's on security issues, and those things all cannot be, cannot be ignored. But also we, 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 we can't be also saying there's nothing else that is good that is coming out of Shabvir. And even, I hope you could, even if it's outside of this, the audiovisual and, and the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture and, and, and Preservation, there is a whole lot of other things uh, that yes. are happening in, in, in Shabri. Yes. I mean, I know there has been a group of, of, of young people that have done so much work trying to assist a group of disabilities. Uh, when they go to school, they come back, they teach them uh, handwork. And so these are other things that are coming that even, you know, one is, is, is happy to see that, you know, there's somebody that is just saying, you know, I will just take my time and donate to the younger kids so that they must not feel the frustrations that they're faced with, but so that we can also put a, 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 a smiles on, on, on people's faces. So I'm saying, Joseph, from, from, from civil uh, uh, society, uh, with all the challenges that we have, poverty, the issues of apartheid housing, which we, we, we mentioned when we were talking about earlier, the issues of the TRC not being able to assist us in this human rights, in today's issues and today's human rights problems from civic society, where do we stand? Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, leadership. You, 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 you see the problem here that we are seeing, we are doing things that are not tangible, beneficial to the victims. Let me just make mention of two interventions that one has been embarking upon since one started uh, to work with, with, with um, a Kulmani support group and Shabib Foundation. Um, from the social cohesion point of view and nation building point of view, I have requested the National Department of Arts and Culture to procure us what we call a hydroform interlock brick making uh, machines for three communities. The first community to be given preference here is Shabville, then Bipatong, Small Farms, and Everton. Why these projects? Um, till today, uh, the, the, the roofing system uh, that we found at Shabville, it's one of the apartheid era system, uh, the one that still uh, uses uh, what we call. Uh, uh, asbestos, mm -hmm. which is hazardous and dangerous to the health of those that uh, are living in those houses. And mm -hmm. no one has done anything about that. Uh, it's six years down the line. Uh, people are still dying of that asbestos, but there is no intervention. That is one of the programs that will say uh, if it is successful, because even uh, the day before I was engaging the social development, the national office, ne? Uh, uh, to uh, allow the communities to build brick themselves, because those uh, alternative form of brick making is not using, it's not like a conventional brick making machine, but it is using less water, it is using less cement, and it is using... Um, uh, 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 or the communities are building those houses themselves. In that package that I've requested, there is a training package that is involved, mm -hmm. which will be training individuals and community members to build those houses themselves. But over and above that, that pilot project, if it is done, we'll be donating these machines to communities to continue commercializing, to continue building those alternative bricks uh, that will be taking care of uh, your pit latrine uh, toilets that find expressions in small farm and Everton in terms of sanitation broadly. But at the end of the day, at least we would have left behind the skills and expertise and know-how of how to make bricks, how to commercialize bricks, and how to make an ends living uh, for the victim and survivors. Mm -hmm. When you check, there's a serious backlog of houses since 19... 1996, where the applicants have st still not been a, benef a, 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 a beneficiaries and recipient of a government housing project. So when we need such tangible um, uh, uh, interventions that will make or improve the livelihoods uh, of the victims and survivors and the community of Savile in general. Secondly, we are mm -hmm. saying to government, government must not treat us as a terrible entities. 
Government <laughs> must bring projects and programs that will be sustainable to us. Mm -hmm. One idea that we can do, the very same precinct and other heritage sites, why government can't donate these to civic society organization, like your Kulumani support group, like your Shabril Foundation, so that uh, 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 communities themselves might begin to commercialize these entities. I'll just make mention of the Shavil precinct where we've got a library, a library that has been closed uh, uh, since the beginning of this year, which does not serve the purpose of the communities. Everything in, 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 in the valley has been sold. You can't access uh, the river. We have to pay for that. Um, uh, there's a difficulty in accessing our heritage site if they are not taken care of. So let's have an arrangement or let's have a framework where we are at least creating employment uh, for those who are affected. It cannot be that we are a, a subject of, 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 of food parcels only without us being able to create or generate food for ourselves. We need those backyard gardens where government will be donating to us uh, uh, or those who are affected uh, the machinery, the resources, for us to at least establish our own backyard, backyard gardens. Over mm -hmm. and above that, we've got institutions like your, your the higher education institutions, like your Valley University of Technology, your Northwest University. How do we tap into the expertise and the know-how of, 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 of such department for the beneficiation of, 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 of Sharpville? We have been trying so immensely to put Shabville to the standard of, of, of so way to Villagas to be precise. But what is it that is tangible that UNESCO is, is, is bringing other than affirming us as a world heritage site? So when mm -hmm. we are saying we need uh, the support, we need a tangible support, not the support that where uh, 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 those who are obsessed with tenders will be benefiting, but support and interventions which will be directed to the victim uh, 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 and 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 survivors of the massacre. So let's think broadly, because uh, from where I'm standing, we have been doing one and the same thing. The, the 280 million that has been given or that was a subject to build a precinct, how much of it, it has been cascaded down to those uh, I think, I don't know, I think Joseph froze, but I think we, we, we're getting the gist of what he's saying. So what, 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 what I think now, I, 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 I need to just read the comments from, from our supporters and our viewers and our listeners right now. Uh, there is a message from uh, Sipot Lamini saying, uh, the positives that we have is people like Nico, who advocates for the struggling and who recognizes the poor. He continues to say the GFC, please engage with other stakeholders in government and private sectors. And he also says uh, this is an educational and informative session. Thank you so much, Sipot uh, Lamin. Uh, 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 Nico, with, yes. with regards to, with regards to, actually, let me, let me rather go to, 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 to May Petani. Uh, uh, Petani, the programs that you think right now where we are sitting uh, with all the 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 the, the social development programs that it is go go sikuluman kids i think they long hurry they are also giving opportunity to the young ones because i think the issue is not only now only about the survivors and the victims but now we are talking about also youth development programs give youth development programs they think they long hurry let's on a kamoka ka 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 kuluman Kulumane itusa bacha. Kaholo holo hoko ba tole di baza. Kia pele. Kia la kupe la fo di baza ri. Nale risuku di sempan. Kiba si iba di tola. Kulumane hape hape. Isa ba na ho ba ya. Mo ho na le ba to ba ya nten di koso te di. Ba kono ho ba tusa. Ba kono ho punya le so wa nena. Kaholo holo kulumane mo tata ba yon. Kiba to ba ba holo. Bas <laughs> 
for the muso, or by Kenya di Colo, Diary Jet to a Sabor, Mosala, Na, Hajisa, what I would want to have, he would have one of the other twelve Majeti, Harana, Hopan, one as much as they are telling me. But now what about Mada Kurman? What was it in Colo, Kilonel Bakado, Impa Kurman, in the Ebu, in the Matuza, Kahona Savasavina Pin, Kavachabala, Dimak. But special doctors. Baba Jerry, the Muso, how we can we show who punishes it to faith? So, Mama, I think what what we are saying because of Jana, I get we are what Hansa Kibosa di Pozozi. Robosa di Pozozi Lung, who relona hands taking all of us, Hansa Kis Zeki Naman taking all of us. Who repeats a thing, Lorona. I get I said, Hurry, among the things I know what I want us to find at the end of this conversation is recommendations where we need to start intervening and looking at little things. It does not have to be. A, a huge responsibility, but we need to know where we need to start. So taking all of issues of uh, educational challenges and bursaries uh, for the young people, issues of social uh, uh, grants and, and, and health for the elderly, and 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 all these recommendations regarding all Luruna refiti se umor ka kona ufiti sa ting Luruna ter kona unka bi karabel huton Luruna ka bona resta isang kojoang ringe bi karabel. Particularly, I will take responsibility to say the GFC can only focus on development and issues around audiovisual industries. When we have opportunities around audiovisual industries, uh, we will then need to then say, Felix, how, how do we come back, Nico, look at all the uh, uh, programs and all the other uh, institutions and the development programs where we can start working together so that I don't overcommit myself because of, as the Film Commission, our responsibility and sole responsibility is to promote the audiovisual industries within Gauteng. And that is, it comes with 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 a, a skills development and training facilities. It comes with audience development programs, which we can do a, a, a Liluna. It's also looking at people that can start applying uh, to making their films. Because of, I know there's a lot of groups telling uh, where they are shooting uh, randomly, but how do we start also maybe training them and getting them to get the necessary education for them to start a producing films that are a content elongori, it can grow legs and can also be seen in spaces elongori. They are now on mainstream, but also how do we start a, maybe assisting with our enterprise development project, which is giving startup a, equipment and 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 startup a, packages for a, aspiring a, and developing a, filmmakers to start getting the little work as they are doing a lot of freelance work. I know there's a lot of freelance work that is happening between City Bank and Mfuleni and Lisey. I know there's also that problem and that demarcation that is always ongoing uh, uh, from that side. Also the responsibility that we have Runa as the Gauteng Film Commission is also trying to make sure that we are preserving authentic stories, uh, South African authentic stories and also preserving the issues of language. We are trying to also promote people to tell stories in their own languages in obviously those 11 official languages of this country. So those are the interventions from the GFC side. And um, we can go back after this conversation and look at what the services of GFC uh, we are offering versus the needs within line of, 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 of audiovisual industries. And I think also then it, it, it gives us the opportunity to then also ask Shelly, uh, Shelly, what, what opportunities do you have uh, from the department uh, where now people that are watching our session can then go back and say, these are the offerings that you're having, these are the opportunities you have, and how do they go about applying for these opportunities? So that let's talk about the responsibility of things that we have in control over. Uh, I can't talk on behalf of issues that are with outside of GFC, but Lona from the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, as we are also a partner, uh, in this session, what opportunities do you have, which now even our people that are in the session can go back to the community and say, there's so much opportunities, this is what we need to do. Where do we go? Mm, sure. Please unmute. Hi, uh, Chair, yes, you are correct. We do have a hub in, in the Val that's in the city. 
community and the hub is there to cater for the needs of the community. We have great potential for people in the creative arts, musicians, sportsmen. And so there's a, a different, there's a lot of variety where people can go and apply and, and just giving their names and, and for training. So there's lots and lots of uh, potential for the upcoming youth to get themselves involved in sports, music, creative arts, and, and we do have the office there. So what we could do on the Facebook is to give our con my contacts details and then people can contact us and then we can forward their applications to the office in Verenigen. Uh, remember that we also work with the Citibank District Municipality, where they could also assist. Uh, and, and we had a round of dialogues a week ago, and we had the same questions that were arise, arise to us, is what can we offer? Yes, we can offer lots of training in the musical side, in the arts and culture, creative arts, sports, uh, and uh, various other languages, culture, poetry writing, and, and um, filming, like you mentioned, that falls under GFC. So there's, there's, there is quite a few varieties that we could offer you. So, so Shelley, just, just, just share with us, because as, we, as I was saying, that we also need to talk about the good that government is doing. We can't neglect that government is working um, at, some, at some corners, each when, even if we don't highlight. How much training have you done? How many people have you, have you trained? And are those people employed? Uh, what is the feedback in, in those groups? Uh, well, I haven't got those details with me right now, Chair. I definitely haven't got that. But there was lots and lots of youth that we came in. We had internship as well that we put onto the market. Uh, we have musicians. So there's a number, as number, but I haven't got the correct details with me at the moment and the number. Are, that, are your training opportunities open right now or are you only opening in the new financial year? Uh, well, in the new financial year. Thank you. So as of yeah. April, um, viewers can watch and, and follow uh, the departments um, online and um, websites Web. to check on opportunities from the beginning of the new financial year. Lovely. Thank you. So yeah. Felix, yeah. from your side, what opportunities yes. do you have for us? Um, I think from our side, we'll continue to motivate and try and, and pursue the, 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 the struggle of the Sharpville survivors, because we've been working with Kulumani Group uh, all these years. We've been working with Nico. We've been working with that communities. And we will try and champion as much as possible a lot of the outcomes that uh, they are, 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 des are desiring for. For me, the issue really is that uh, I think we're moving into a new dispensation there is a social compact that is starting to develop in Sharpville where the community itself is starting to take matters into their own hands, which is a very mature sign in our own democracy. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from a deeper perspective, you will see that there is a maturing of our communities that is realizing that government on its own does not have the full capacity to give in to everybody's desires. But if the communities, uh, and what I'm seeing happening in Sharpville, is setting a very, very strong trend of uh, self-help uh, and self-processing uh, of ideas and self-processing of, of opportunities and stuff like that, I think we are on a very good wicket. And there is no one better than to manage the community's future than the community itself. Otherwise, we would become what one could classify a welfareist uh, community, just depending on handouts and stuff. And I agree with uh, Nico. I agree with Mahapatani. I agree with uh, my good friend Joseph Khadebe at uh, VUT that we need to look at more strategic areas that we can open up both the economy and the skills development of that specific community. For example, a classical example, it's one of the few townships that has a dam, a magnificent dam that's right there on the periphery of the township, that's part of the township, that should have been swallowed up by developers and everybody uh, to, to look at the, at, the, at the magnificence of what could happen there. We could develop an African theme park right there on the dam, for example. Mm -hmm. 
that would create jobs and a whole range of stuff. So we've written these proposals many, many years ago. My office is full of proposals, of ideas, of what can happen uh, in Sharpville, what we should do in Sharpville. The challenge that we had we, uh, recently, and, and Nico is witness to this, we've just managed to bring even the the the, 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 the VAL uh, business forums and the whole business chambers into Sharpville. We've, for the first time in history, it's happened two, three years ago that they're starting to come into the areas and starting to see the need of that specific community. So for me, I think the more we reach out, the more we open up the boundaries of Sharpville to the outside world, the more we are going to get philanthropists, philanthropists that will come and invest into that specific area, the more it would encourage government also to come on board as a strategic partner to some of these investments. And I believe it would open up the whole stagnation that has happened over the last 61 years in Sharpville. I'm of the opinion that it can only go better and better and better and better. I think we've reached a slump in the, in the processes. And I believe that uh, what is happening now augurs very, very well for a future that will not only just look at the development of Sharpville, but Sharpville could become the catalyst of other township development in this country. I'm very excited about the opportunity and the people I work with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think I can commit, you know, you know, sometimes uh, you have to commit to, to some form of responsibility. I can commit that tomorrow we are screening uh, the human rights films uh, at the monument. Thank you so much for making the spaces available uh, for us to come in. But I think outside of that, we will also offer a information sharing session about, I will personally even do it, about the GFC and the services so that we explain in detail how people can access us, how people can access our services, how people can access the, 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 the internships and mentorship programs that we have, so that we don't have a, 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 a stress of a pattern in the school. I give at the when I when I'm a little rookies. So I, we can do that, but I think also maybe even also what 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 I can also uh, uh, also declare in this in this session is that generally sometimes when people do have a programs and sessions, you do send an invitation to the GFC to say we've got a program like this and we've got so many students or learners that are doing audiovisual industries. Can you please do come in and explain your services? It is our responsibility as as the Film Commission to be sharing this information as much as we we can't get tired of it, unfortunately. So. I think it's, for me, I think that the, the problem that we have in the side of Shabville, it's the issue that people don't have adequate information for them to access these services. It's not the issue that there's no one that is doing a audiovisual industries. It's not the issue that, that no one is doing a work within, within the sector, but I think it's the issue of not understanding our services, maybe also not understanding our mandate as well, because once people don't understand the mandate, then they take this thing for granted, or maybe, ah, let's not go there. So I, I will take full responsibility to say, tomorrow when I come to Shadville, I will do a proper session around the services of the GFC and how people can access services of the GFC in all that I've mentioned, because I mean, we have about over eight services. As I've said, it's audience development, it's training uh, permits, uh, content development, distribution for TV, marketing and distribution, going to film festivals, uh, permits and locations. It's, it's a lot, script development, uh, enterprise development. So I think all these services, I, I can only maybe just take that responsibility to say tomorrow, I will do it. But and then next year, next year, or at the end of the year, when I don't have applications, it can be now the responsibility. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
We have done a lot of solutions and, and, and interventions, especially in partnership with government. That's what I like when you said that uh, we must, we must uh, give praise where it's due. Government is really working. You know, some people will look at uh, major challenges and forget that there are smaller challenges that are actually met on a daily basis, and that actually makes a difference. Um, we've got a, 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 an information center here. It's called Quito Information and Development Center. It's based at the Shabil old police station. And we've got a help desk that is meant Monday to Friday. So I'm challenging you now that uh, the work of the GFC can actually be brought here so that any young person within the zone, it's not only for Shabdil, but it's in the entire zone from Bipatong to Steel Park to Franak and Beras Park, um, as well as uh, Bokhilo, can come here and find that information at any given time without uh, having to wait for a workshop or anything like that. So we, we can actually be a referral uh, space for the information that you want. Even applications, you can uh, tell anyone from a website or anywhere to say, if you want information or applications are coming out, go to Kizu Information Development Center, the old police station in Chalky. That's where you will get the information. But besides that, we have started the process of taking care of the elderly especially those who are from the Kulman support group. Uh, we have uh, linked them up with the food bank, as I said. They are getting the groceries. We are continuing the discussion with the, uh, the premier's office in terms of them getting medical support and other things related to military veterans. So those are processes that we've actually started uh, from the civil society point of view. We have uh, established our first vertical farm um, yesterday. The tunnel was put up yesterday. And that vertical farm is going to be a training facility for home farmers. So they'll be coming here to the center to learn how to farm and then get startup packs to be able to be there at their own places because it doesn't give dignity for someone to be given a plate of prepared food. It's mm -hmm. best if someone has got his own, that's, the, that, that's where the human rights issue comes in. It's mm -hmm. always best for someone to have his own way of planting whatever that he wants to plant or even sell it so that he can have money to be able to buy anything that he wants. The food parcels and the, the prepared food are actually making people not to be able to think and end up dependent. Unlike if you give them an opportunity to be able to do things on their own, they will be as that. So the Department of Social Development in Hong is our partner in this instance, and they are funding all these programs. We are even including the artists that have been put here by City Bank and the Department of Arts and, um, and Culture, Sports Recreation, Arts and Culture, to be giving out their skills to other young people. So we are starting that program on the 1st of April. It has been approved. And uh, the artists that are in here at the Old Champion Police Station will be facilitating programs for young people so that they can learn what they know. We are teaching young people now for the first time in Africa to learn how to build an electric bike that we have actually sourced from Berlin in Germany. And uh, we have been having these bikes for two years. The Department of Social Development has actually uh, approved funding for young people to be able to be taught how to build and maintain the spikes. Those are the programs that are starting on the, the, the 1st of April this year. So besides the Community Nutrition Development Center that we're having here, we are saying all departments, all departments in Gauteng can use us to be able to reach out information for our communities. And not only in Shabu, but for the entire Bicepiville zone which we are serving currently through uh, life skills, computer skills, as well as the Community Nutrition Development Center. So we are here. When you come tomorrow, you must via us, because it's just a stone throw from, from uh, the, the exhibition center, so that you can see what they're doing. But we are, actually, I'm, I'm putting my, my, my head on the block here as the acting center manager, that bring the information, we'll make it a point that it gets to uh, all young people that they want, you may not even have to pay for it because we are funded by another you know, leg of government, but our help desk can be able to give out that information to any other young person. And we'll be proud to actually put it in our marketing that the, the GFC has got a footing in our center for any information that we want to relation to filmmaking or any storytelling processes. Thank you so much. What's your bite uh, on that, uh, Joseph? Very, very good initiatives. I'm, I'm, I'm yes. very much happy if we have such intervention 
And let me applaud Uniko uh, because uh, he's a different person now than the person I knew two years, three years ago. He's <laughs> one person who was pushing uh, left, right, and center. And I'm happy with the work that we are reporting uh, from, from a civic point of view. But let me challenge, let me challenge colleagues. And by, by doing so, I'm just probing this, this conversation, just testing our fitness for purpose. On yes. the 21st, we've got an event that will be happening at Civic Theater. I happened by default, maybe through the invitation of Shelley, uh, to say I wanted to be part of that uh, conversation uh, the, for the build up activities. You know what happened? The conversation that I had was that, how many artists are we, are we bringing in? There was no conversation that says, uh, how do we bring the Kulumani support group, uh, the victims and the survivors, for them to give us a play. They've got a play that they are having and which is not paid for. So well, I'm challenging the caliber of thinking that as much as we are doing this for business purposes, let's think for the survivors. Mm. If you are going to pay 25,000 rand of an appearance to one artist and fail to recognize the victim and survivors in that process, there is serious injustice in that. I've checked the program itself. The program, it says that uh, the, 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 the victims and the survivors uh, will, will, will honor a, a, a session, the graveyard session, then they will be taken at home. Then that formal, formal uh, function that will be graced by the premier and so forth, they wouldn't be there. There will be performers, five of them. Why can't we call them to the fore and give them that 25,000 for the play that they are doing? Just to show that we are recognizing that your role, your specific role, those lived memories, uh, those lived experiences that happened, not the written ones. So what I'm saying, this is the thinking uh, that Tema, uh, Neville and, and Shelley, that we must have, as we go forth, we must think of the first hand uh, uh, interventions that will be directly beneficial to their own groups. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm happy, I'm happy with the interventions from government, I'm happy from Shelley and, and Nico, but I'm saying that, are they really benefiting these people? It's a challenge that I'm putting, and I'm not leaving myself behind. When I took this responsibility that I will make it my task uh, 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 to be in their space, to assist where I can assist, bringing uh, uh, Ubaba Okoto to the fore, bringing VU2 to the fore, bringing arts and culture nationally uh, in, 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 into the main, bringing national social development, all of that is channeled in assisting the victim and survivor. But in a, in a, in a, in a broader sense, also changing the material conditions of Shaville in its totality and the surrounding environs. So well, with that, and I'm happy that we've got the GFC in this regard. All this good work that is happening on the ground, we must begin to tell a narrative. We must begin mm. to publicize them. We must begin to commercialize them. And in part of that commercializing, let a portion of it go to a Chaville Foundation. Let a portion of it go to Kulmani Support Group. So let, let, let's bring donors. Let's bring donors to the fore. There are donors who are even uh, prepared uh, if they are given a tour uh, in any arrangement similar to Chaville. They, they are plowing funds. So let's have let's have an entity where let's have a hub. Where, 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 where such donations will be sourced. Because remember, the, the, the survivors, they don't have a know-how of doing these things. So well, I'm mm. challenging Nico and, and your team that bring young people to the fore, because at the end of the day, it is young people who must take on this painting and run with True. it. Mm. Well, the stories that they are telling, the lived experiences that they are telling, they will, they will die a natural death if we do not capacitate these youth with this critical information. But in the process, let's bring NYTA on board. Let's teach these kids on how to solicitate funds for the benefit of, of, of the victims and survivors. 
So well, we are doing it, but I'm saying that there is a lot that we can do as a collective. And we are pledging Tina as we have a to Value University of Technology that we will travel this road, we will travel this journey uh, with them. Uh, it is commendable of the team that we are having. Let me assure you, the team, the, the, the caliber of panelists, we have been doing co community conversations, we have been doing dialogues, we have been doing, uh, you name them, with this collective. But this struggles goes beyond this collective. It cannot be that it is only Neville who must respond from the government perspective. I would have loved to have an executive mayor and ask the executive mayor, executive mayor, what is your plight uh, in this, in this, in this uh, or in these challenges that we are facing us? Where is our uh, uh, executive uh, directors? Where are our MMCs when it comes to uh, 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 these direct interventions. We don't want to see them when they do, um, uh, when they open the uh, this, these uh, humongous, huge ceremonies. We want to see them on the ground. We don't want to see them when we give them reports for them to shine. We want them to uh, be food soldiers. And we wanted to challenge them directly to say that it can be with limited resources and in, in, in most cases, no resources at all, we are able to clean these facilities. We'll go to such an extent that let's demystify this system of tendering and begin to uh, uh, bring, uh, let these services be done by civil society. Because we have seen that lot of, lot of, 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 of money is going to individuals which they are not even plowing back to communities. I don't want to talk about the state of our municipality where even our accounts are in the hands of Chinese. So how then are we going to upgrade? How then are we going to uh, take care of our, our, our heritage, take care of our communities, even if, 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 uh, if, if our, our, our account has been seized? And we have never even had any civic organization uh, uh, movement saying that let's march to the municipality, let's march to these Chinese, because the, the, their actions are hampering directly uh, to our service delivery. It sure. seems like as if this arrangement of Chinese, we, we, we are even uh, harnessing it. So, so I'm saying, so speaking, bro speak, speaking broadly, uh, yes. these challenges uh, that are facing us, uh, we must begin uh, to, to scratch the surface, level the playing field, as a so, collective so, and hold those who are in power to account. Thank you. So Joseph, you know, and unfortunately the responsibility of being a stewardship is that you will, you will fight until you go to the grave. And I think this is where we are in this group today. So stewardship has a lot of responsibility where you even neglect your own blood family, but the family that you find on the streets becomes the family that you even support and see them smile more than the one that you live with. So that's the responsibility, unfortunately, of a stewardship. Uh, those that are Christians will say you're doing the Lord's work, unfortunately. So, 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 so your frustration and your frustration is, I can see it on the faces of everybody on, 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 on this round table. And, and, and we are all agreeing and we are all stepping down because because we are, we are here frustrated by, by, by all the work that we are doing and, and, and it's never enough. It is never enough. And we, we, I, will, I will die, there will be another traveling. Her work that she'll be doing, it will never be enough. But, but also it does not mean it will stop us from continuing to do the little that we are doing. So I think on that note, I would also like to read out uh, comments from our viewers that are watching. Uh, they are saying, I agree the issue of food parcels is not sustainable. Let us learn how to cultivate the soil. And information uh, sessions would work because now people can engage and access government services better. So, 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 so our viewers are sharing the same sentiments to say issues of only just food parcels is not sustainability, but let's, let's learn how to fish so that a, a person can fish more, more uh, 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 can, can fish more, can what? What is the word I'm looking for? Yeah, give a person a rod and he'll be able to fish. There we go. Yeah. You give see, a person a rod. <laughs> yes. But I think, I think I'm happy with, with, with where we are starting now to say, let's start with providing more information with all the services that we are currently providing so that our people can start accessing the, the work that we are doing so that we can then, once we, we have done that, we then move 
to the second step to say, now that this group is getting all these services, where do we go assisting the next crop of group because of our groups of diversity and our a, a diverse needs as well um, can not only be, be, be catered only with the Department of, of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation and the GFC, but also how do we also start once there is movement and once there is a collaboration, other a, 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 a organizations will certainly want to join this winning team and also bring back or plow their services as well. But I think it just needs us to take a step uh, to grow, to say this is what we are trying to do. And everybody wants to associate themselves with with success. No one wants to uh, asso uh, uh, associate themselves with failure. But once somebody can see that we are winning in our strides and our little corners, somebody will definitely open up a hand and be able to give us the support that we need. But with all the, 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 the sessions and all the stakeholders uh, being part of these conversations, I am sure and I am, I am a, a certain that we are going to find solutions, whether it's through social development uh, challenges that we are facing, whether it's through other social development issues that uh, we, we discussed earlier. But I think also it's still also important for us to understand and label ourselves as South Africans. We need to be able to talk about our stories without blinking. We need to, we need to talk about our history without thinking twice. We need to also even go beyond the issue of just commemorative events, but how do we also then start having this conversation at a higher level where history is taught in our schools because of as things stand, we all know that our own history is not even taught in our own schools yet. We're talking about preservation of history. You can't talk about preservation of history when you don't know it. Uh, we can't talk about the preservation of language when we are only speaking English. So the, the, the conversations of these human rights are not only about just the two departments, but it's uh, the holistic approach of human rights from our language, from our history, from our traditions and culture, from social needs, from security issues, and 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 development of who we are as, as South Africans and who we are a, 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 as a nation. So I think that the issues that we have today, we also cannot say we are tired of speaking. We also cannot say we are tired of engaging. It is our responsibility to continue to engage. It is our responsibility to continue to knock on these doors. I think with, with, with these words, I would like to give everyone a last bite of your closing remarks and um, we can call it a night. We are chasing a time and we need to be done with our session at five. So I will start with, I, I'm gonna end with Neville. I'm gonna start with, with, with Shelly. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay, I, I just want to comment on, on Joseph. Very, very progressive thinking. Very, very excited and very, very progressive in a sense that, you know, he's so passionate about these topics and subjects that we should be supporting him. Coming back to his passion, uh, passion on the Imbaula or the Kulumani group is that we must realize also that the platform needs to be catered for everybody, which we can. And with the Kulumani group, we have a special program that we have the Imbaula story. Uh, where a few days before the uh, Human Rights Day, the 21st, is that we host the Kulumani group and we have the storytelling and we've been doing it year after year. And, and my suggestion is to the Kulumani group now is that they should start teaching the youth about the story. And secondly, that GFC should come in here and film these stories because it's very critical that we should not lose the context of this whole story. And Mam Salina is here. I've spoken to her already about it is that it is very, very critical that we need to start training the youth. And the second point on the Kulumani or the Impala story is to get the youth to start learning the story. Thank the you. other thing that I want to also speak about is the sponsors. As much as government is there, remember that we cannot do everything. We do not have the capacity to do everything and to assist. This is where we need the help of the sponsors. And there's lots and lots of good sponsors in, in the VAR that we should be tapping on to assist with us. Um, the challenges, there's quite a bit. And, and also we, we spoke about um, the NYDA is that we also had a session that where the NYD needs to come in forcefully. It seems to be that they're in the background. And the main issue now is that 
Lots of organizations are in the wild, but they are doing their own little thing. There isn't one big body where everyone can be sitting on and contributing. We find that people are working in silos. And today you'll hear from Nico that he's been doing A, B, and C, which is fantastic. We applaud him for the work that he's been doing. But I think we need to be start communicating uh, to all the different groups and maybe get people from different organizations to sit in an organization like that and work forward. Uh, that's from me. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, then Nicole Limepetani. Please. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> government <laughs> Um, a very good story is happening now. Uh, the old Shaville police station has been a place of horror. And the old Shaville police station now is becoming a place of hope. And that is the message that we want to give to the world today, that uh, on the 22nd, do be on a Monday, we are taking out a band out of this place that is going to perform on a human rights festival uh, with the, the United Nations uh, Office for Human Rights as well as the Amit Katar Foundation. So those are things that we are saying. Out of ashes, there can be good things that are coming out. The spirit of those people who died here 60 years ago are actually looking upon us to say, we had dreams we wanted to see change, we needed freedom, and this police station is actually providing that now. So this is the place where information must be shared, and without favor, without any conditions, without someone saying, I know Nico, so I'm going to have access to it. So, I must go, I must go, I must go, I Project uh, man, uh, especially the issues still that we are not People have been brought there. Uh, sometimes they can't have something to to, to watch themselves with, and that's why we are engaging other departments to say, social development is not only those that are on our databases. There are those that are coming with social problems that are instant. That how do you actually assist them? So the help desk is open. Anyone who wants to know anything about Shabil and the story. But besides that, any government intervention programs can come to the Shabri Old Police Station and get that information. And mainly for young people and women, because you know how women have been uh, you know, uh, oppressed for, for quite a long time. They were even oppressed in terms of accessing information. And we're making the point that from this center, we make that information to be, to be uh, available. In partnership with universities that we work with, Beauty as well as Northwest University, we are saying the future looks better now. And let's not fail on the dreams of those who died 60 years ago in front of the same police station. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, saving the best for last. Never. Uh, thank you very, very much. Um, I'm excited about the future. I need to be quite honest with you. I, I'm so excited because we've been part and parcel of the maturity of what is happening in Sharpville today as we speak. Nico and them being at the police station, we've had a hand in all of this. The Kulumani group, we've had a hand in all of this. But it is time now 
that I believe that the message that we're receiving from the community in Sharpville is that the demand is greater than the current outcomes. And that is the unfortunate part of where we are in today's discussion. The community is saying that the demands are greater than the outcomes that they are receiving. And I agree with them. And I would like to say to everybody out there who can play a very vul a vulnerable role in all of this, a valuable role in all of this, is that it is time for us to develop a very comprehensive plan of how we want Sharpville to look to be. Because what is happening, Sharpville is being developed in, in a piecemeal way, if you understand where I'm coming, by default almost. And uh, you cannot develop a, a place like Sharpville with the magnitude and the historical background that it has by default. You have to develop it on the basis of a very strategic plan and you must have all the players on board. And I'm excited that we are slowly moving into that arena. If you look at what happened uh, to Germany after World War I, they had a Marshall Plan, even though Germany was completely flattened. It took them 45 years to rebuild Germany. The problem that we have in Sharpville today is that we don't have a Marshall Plan. We don't have the requisite resources to develop it to the Sharpville that it should be. And I agree with the community. I, I agree that we need to look at this. We need to form a social compact with government, with the private sector, with business, and also with the workers and uh, with civil society so that we can move into the next area of development in this democracy. Because if we don't do that, we will consistently be begging for our own rights. And I don't think it's correct. I think we should utilize the talents that we have. We should utilize the opportunities that we have, not only in Sharpville, but all around in the area, and bring that to the center of the development in Sharpville. I'm excited about what's going to happen um, because I can see into the future. I, have, I, I, I can see it's coming together. I'm excited yeah. about tomorrow. And even if I'm not there, uh, as part of that future, um, hopefully somebody, maybe Nico knows some writer or playwright or something, they maybe write a little story about a guy like me, uh, a guy like uh, Ahmad Katrada Foundation, uh, you know, the people that have really played, uh, that has been there when days were dark in Sharpville. It's only been the few of us that has been consistently knocking on the doors and hammering and hammering and hammering. I remember starting in this process and I never had any gray hairs. Today I'm completely gray. And I am so excited about where tomorrow holds and the future holds in Sharpville. I'm excited because if you go to the monument, you'll see the youth is sitting there. They are all there busy with their cell phones because we've installed fiber for the community in that specific area. So that already opens up another avenue of excitement for this youth. I look at them sometimes and I see them busy with TikTok. I don't know if you know this TikTok thing. And these guys are busy doing extraordinary stuff. These youngsters on the seats outside of the monument are doing extraordinary stuff. So I'm very excited. I'm saying that we need to allow Sharpville to take its course. It must shine. Develop, yeah, and to develop itself into the place it wants to be. And we as government and civil society and business should play a supportive role in making it happen. I think that's the message that I have. Uh, and last but not least, so that I don't fail my one of my great heroines, which is Charlotte Mkleka, which a lot of people don't understand, is the very first black science academic in South Africa, in the history of South Africa. A wonderful woman that has set up the, 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 the Wilberforce Institute right here in the Val, in Everton, where some of the greatest presidents throughout Africa came to study at our facilities here in Everton. So there's a story to be told about this community of the Val that hasn't been told. There is an unstructured process that needs to be told because many of the struggles in the Val has been key in repositioning 
South Africa's democracy that we all enjoy today. So without uh, trying to say too much about these things, I'm excited. I think the Val deserves to be recognized for the amount of value that it had added in the uh, liberation struggles and also in the acquiring of democracy in South Africa. It's by no mistake that the constitution was signed there on the 26th, I mean, on the 10th of uh, December 1996. And I'm excited. It didn't happen anywhere else in the country. Why mm. shameful? So it tells mm. a story on its own. And we need to continue to tell the story and start to encourage the learn learners and the youth of tomorrow. Because the mistake that we are making, we are losing that element of struggle history because most of the people is starting to find themselves in an aged disposition. True. So we need to transfer these skills. We need to transfer all of these challenges. Our youth must be there and even the second generation after them must be there in order to pick up the spear. Once that happens, I think we will tell another story. Maybe one day you'll invite us back and we'll have a discussion of what happened in shop. I hope I so. You. I hope so. I will read out uh, the one of the comments from uh, our viewer. Uh, it's Ding Mo. He's saying collaboration is more imperative. It is the responsibility of activists, academic activists, industry, and most importantly, government to build a cadre of civil society. So I think that that the, so so I think the conversation is is just gelling well with even our viewers and audiences are understanding and are agreeing with what we are saying to say the collaboration and the partnership between uh, all these spheres are very important for us to always fight our social and human rights issues that we are always faced with in as much as they are revolving there will always be issues that as society we have a responsibility to address and to tackle i think from my side i would like to say thank you so much for making the time uh, to participate in this uh, round table thank you Shelley, for making the, this a, a a priority and making sure that our lovely guests uh, have pre uh, presented us with their knowledge, uh, brilliance, as well as information that I think um, I've written so much. And I do feel that I do also have a responsibility uh, from my side uh, to address and look at the things that we can also try to address from the Houting Film Commission side. Uh, you know, um, among the things that we know with human rights is that, you know, human beings have been... Uh, oppressed in, in, in workspaces, in society, as well as in community. But it takes just speaking to colleagues and speaking your issues so that they can be addressed. So tomorrow, I would like to invite our viewers and audiences to come watch uh, film screenings at the Shabdel uh, Monument. We will be there for the whole day tomorrow, including workshops on information sharing sessions. Please do come. Uh, we are excited and we are happy to, to host our film screenings. But I think it should not only end there. I did say that we need more audience development initiatives around the Shabdel area so that even the content that we are creating in silos we need to start criticizing each other before we can even take it to the world. It's easier when you get criticism in your own family. By the time you face the world, you are more ready. But by the time you get to other people, you know there is a support um, that is behind you. And I think with those words, I would like to say happy human rights uh, month to everyone, to, to my participants, to also my viewers at home, to everybody uh, in the country. Enjoy uh, 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 the holiday and let's all do right. Let's all be stewardship. But also let's teach each other the responsibility that one has to take as just individuals and ensuring that our human rights are not violated. But how do we then promote each other's human rights for us to be greater? Thank you. Thank you so much. And my name again is Ntabiling Pura from the Houting Film Commission. Uh, thank you so much to the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture for allowing us the space to also partner with them and have a lovely afternoon. Thank you so much. industrial township, thousands gather outside a police station in protest against new laws requiring every African to carry a pass at all times.
Many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and non-violence against a government whose reply is only savage attacks on an unarmed and defenseless people. What are human rights? The respect for human rights is a central feature of a constitutional democracy. Human rights protect us against the actions of those who exercise power over us and help us to create a world in which we can all reach our full potential as human beings. We are entitled to have our human rights protected and promoted simply because we are human beings and deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. This means whatever our nationality, place of residence, sex, national or ethnic origin, colour, religion, language or any other status, we are all entitled to fundamental human rights. Because of South Africa's apartheid history, the protection of human rights is specifically important in this country. Before 1994, the most basic rights of the majority of South Africans were not respected by the state. We decided as a nation to protect the human rights of all when we became a democracy, to ensure that no one is subjected to the infringement of our rights and the denial of their human dignity ever again. The protection of human rights in South Africa draws inspiration from the global human rights movement which started after the Second World War and culminated in the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948. Human rights follow three core principles which describe how these rights work and apply. Firstly, our rights are inalienable. That means that our rights will always apply to us simply because we are human. They cannot be taken away from us by anyone. Our rights will not change even if our life circumstances change. The second core principle is interdependence. That means that our rights come as a full package. This is because the protection of some rights depends on the protection of other rights. Our human rights support one another and strengthen one another. The third core principle is equality and non-discrimination. That means that every person enjoys the same set of rights. This is a core principle in our South African context. Rights apply equally to everyone. In a democracy like South Africa, 
human rights are guaranteed by the country's constitution. The constitution is the supreme law of the country. One of the most important parts of our constitution, as far as ordinary people are concerned, is Chapter 2, the Bill of Rights. Our South African Bill of Rights outlines different groups of human rights. First of all, it gives a number of basic rights. They include the right to equality before the law, the right to life, and the right to human dignity. The Bill of Rights then goes on to talk about civil rights, which are the rights that a person has as a member of a community, state, or nation, so they are linked to citizenship. Examples of civil rights include the freedom of religion, belief, and opinion, and the freedom of expression. Then we further have political rights, which include each citizen's right to make political choices, such as forming or campaigning for a political party, and the right to vote in free and fair elections. What is special about our Bill of Rights in South Africa is that it also focuses on socio-economic rights. Examples are the right to housing, the right to education, the right to health care, food and water, and the right to social security. Not all countries commit themselves to these rights. These rights place a special duty and responsibility on our government. They are very important because a large part of the struggle for freedom was about improving the lives of the majority of the people. So these are the different groups of human rights in our Bill of Rights. The Bill requires the state to respect, protect, promote and fulfil these guaranteed rights. But we citizens not only have rights, but obligations too. The same values that protect us have to guide how we treat one another in society. So remember, we too have the responsibility to respect these rights at all times. Even if we do not like another person, it is our duty to respect his or her rights. You can see this easily if you think about a specific right, like the right to basic education. It means that you are free to go to school, but it also means that you should not prevent anyone else from going to school. The Bill of Rights also applies to relations between all individuals and relations between individuals, the government and private institutions. Now, why are human rights so important? Human rights are a central feature of any constitutional democracy. In South Africa, our human rights are outlined in the Bill of Rights, which is found in Chapter 2 of our Constitution and forms the cornerstone of our democracy. It is supposed to ensure that we all enjoy the protection of the democratic values of human dignity, freedom and equality before the law.